a little update on our CS10 machine. Uh, this is a machine that we've had for what we originally thought was just going to be low volume, carry in, very portable type of equipment. Um, and so the original design of this machine that we inherited when we bought the company um, was pretty simple. Everything was um, just basic and very affordable. And what we found is that people were using these on a much more commercial level. And so we wanted to make it so that this equipment was just as dependable as our bigger machines. Um, as we looked at that, and we got feedback from customers over the last several years, and again, we have several hundred of these out around the world, and, uh, but one of the things that we wanted to update were the internal components. And there were a few updates to the cabinet as well. So when you get this machine, um, the idea is in the box, we're gonna have just a couple things that are gonna need to get installed in order to perform. Um, one, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We've taken it out of the box, we've got it up on the counter. I'm gonna go ahead and hinge the lid out of the way. That's our dust cover. And then I'm gonna install the manual brake. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two screws in through the holes that are existing on the side of the cabinet. Then this is our brake. And then again, has a corresponding couple holes that we're gonna go ahead and install inside the cabinet. Then we have nylon locking nuts. We're gonna thread those on by hand to make sure that we don't cross thread or do anything wrong. Get these in place. And we're gonna take a couple tools to tighten those on down. So this is a 3 8 socket, and I, let's see here, I can't make out, I think it's a 1 8 <laughs> Allen wrench or hex wrench. We're going to reach around the back side and run this in. We'll do that to both of the fasteners. Now I didn't run that up super tight yet. I went ahead and got it started. And I'm just going to go ahead, when I get up close again to snug with both bolts, I'll kind of position the brake. I'm just going to lift up on it so it will center in the wheel nicely. I'm going to finish tightening both bolts. And that is all to installing the brake. Now that's the only component of the machine itself that we have to install ahead of putting the sharpening wheel on the machine. Now with the sharpening wheel, we have three holes and a center pin on our hub right in the middle of the machine. Correspondingly, we have the three holes that have the bigger countersink and a center hole. If you notice, there's three more holes because these plates are two-sided. And so when you flip it over, now you have your other corresponding holes to mount. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to look over the top and make sure I find the holes and center them and drop that down on. I'm gonna take my three bolts or set tap, uh, cap screws, if you wanna get technical about it. And we're going to put those in. And again, when you get a new machine, there'll be a hex wrench that is provided in the kit to go ahead and run these down. So I'm going to take it and tighten this until it's just touching. I'm not getting tight, tight yet. I'm just trying to bring it down close. I'm going to do that to all three because I don't want to do is put this in a bind. And so by bringing them down evenly, we won't do that. We won't create that bind. Now I'm going to go back just kind of like tires and your lug nuts. We're going to tighten each one kind of in a order there in a circle. There's only three, so it's not like we're going to go back and forth. And now our machine is assembled and ready for use. Other applications here, we have an on off switch on the front and it's lighted, it'll tell us that we're running. 
and then we also have a variable speed control. So right now it's on the low setting, and as I turn the wheel, we're gonna pick up to speed. Now we're running right in that 900 RPM on the low speed and about 1900 RPM on the high. Um, these machines are good for sharpening anything from a small trimmer blade all the way up, and well, and so then Barber Beauty adjustable blades along with any detachable size blade, including the wide blades. Really works well for those. The only blades that we don't highly recommend on this are the uh, horse cattle and sheep blades for the industry. In that case, we want a little bigger surface because their blades get to three plus inches and uh, we don't have that much surface here. On all those others, your, even your wide blades for the pet grooming and veterinary industry, they work great. So again, very portable, lightweight. If you like to carry things into the shop and work with it, this is a way to go. We just passed 3,000 subscribers on YouTube and we just love it. We thank everybody that has subscribed to our channel and follows our content. Um, if you have questions and other things around the content that we provide, um, even if it's different content, something that you would like to see us do, please include that in your comments or send us a message through our business page on Facebook, things like that, uh, ways that we can communicate back with you. Um, if you're interested in this equipment, even our other models, the best way to get a hold of us is to call into our shop. Um, the number here is 866-963-1990 or locally 515-963-1990. You can also find this equipment on our website. Uh, go to the Nebraska Blades section and that will take you out to or and or sharpening section and you'll find those pieces of equipment and prices. So again, we really appreciate all your attention and uh, that you've taken time to watch our content.